rules full of grace. And it's an argument opening up a clear advantage at the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by a... Yes, folks, it's us again. How are we? Another week and a bit has gone by since we last had the pleasure of addressing you and telling you exactly what to do with your money. How at least uh, these two did. I didn't. Um, but it's great to be back. And we've only got one thing on our minds, and that is that wonderful corner of County Kildare. And it's a bit like when you go to Willie Mullins's, the directions are turn right at the cemetery. When you go to Punchestown, the directions are turn left at Tesco's. And it's as simple as that. And you just keep going. But the two men who are going to be the difference between joy and despair in the next week, and I'm not sure which is which, are the Irish Fields golden boy himself, uh, Mr. <laughs> Ronan Groom, and uh, the champ.ie founder and uh, malefactor, uh, for want of a better phrase, um, Mr. Barry Doyle. Now, the first thing everybody must do is just make sure you have subscribed, please. So you make sure that you never miss a production. It's uh, a bot on the button there. Subscribe. Just click. That's all you've got to do. And then you'll get messages every week. Some of them more understandable than others, looking at the uh, two I've got to deal with here now. Uh, Mate, but we're going to great again. This week about one thing, Punchestown. The end of season festival, they say Ireland is a land of 100,000 welcomes. Well, most of them will be heading to County Kildare, certainly in my experience, uh, this coming week for what should be five fantastic days as the Irish celebrate. But more important than that, Punchestown welcomes crowds back. So the crowds will be thronging. The bookmakers will be expecting. And all they need now is information for the battle to take place. And these two guys are charged with giving you the best of that information. And for those of you that uh, are interested, the word Mullins will not suffice. We require further and better. And those of you that read Gordon's excellent interview uh, with uh, Ronan Groom will be aware that uh, probably anything coming out of uh, Calentra uh, Gordon will know about it, and so will Ronan. So let's go straight into day one. I'm going to do this day by day, guys. So let's remind everybody, of course, uh, the Gold Cup's on the Wednesday. Uh, the first day, the Tuesday, they've done something different this year. Always used to start with a Banks race, where the Banks race has gone to the back of the car. The listed mayor's hurdle kicks things off. But with due respect to the listed mayor's hurdle, we're going to go straight in and talk about grade ones, of which there are plenty. Uh, the big question of the week is, is there going to be room in Willie Mullins' boot on Saturday night for all the trophies that are going to go back to Cliff Sutton? Start with the Bective Stud Novice Hurdle at 4.15 on Tuesday. And uh, it's really a question of what's going to represent Cliff Sutton here, isn't it, Ronan? Uh, very much so. And it's that case, I think, for a lot of the grade ones this week, Mike, as you said. I think Willie has nine favourites out of the 12 grade ones. He, he, he obviously sent out 19 winners last year. It was a record. He was 18 the year before. The big question, I guess, for the week is, can he break 20? Can he get to the 20 mark? And just looking at the entries, he's so strong. It's, it's unbelievable, really, you know. And it could be as simple as people say, oh, if you just follow Willie Mullins for the week, you, will you win money? Um, I did the stats there, there yesterday just for the runners last year. He had 88 runners, 19 winners. If you had a tenner on every every single one of them, you would have finished up money marginally. Uh, you would have made about uh, 20 quid for your one pound stake. So, you know, people say invest in crypto and Bitcoin. If you invest in Willie next week, you, you could be, the, you know, the, the easiest way to make money with regards to the whole week. Here, I think, look, he's got an embarrassment of riches. At the bang at the moment, it's Sir Gerhard Dice Artino State Man, El Fabiolo. So, it's 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 probably two of that, two of those four, maybe even three of them run. Uh, Sir Gerhard is obviously the one people want to concentrate on. He's in the two and a half mile race on Saturday, as well. Uh, Logic would say he'd probably go for that race, seeing as he went for that race at Cheltenham. But Willie, if you do remember with with Vautour and and Fahim, the year they won the the Supreme and the Ballymore at Cheltenham, he switched them up when he came back to Punchestown. Tour went up and tripped, but he came back to two miles. And I think if he's thinking about Sir Gerhard as a possible champion hurdle horse, he might want to see him again over the two miles here on the grade one. Dice at Dynamo, look, he, he's back at, over the course and distance that he won so impressively in the Moscow Flyer. Uh, you know, he fell coming down the hill. Um, probably wasn't going to match up to Constitution Hill in all probability. You know, he wasn't going to get close there, but he could have been a good second easily. 
uh, and back at Punches Town, he, he he's obviously a huge threat. Uh, and El Fabiolo is the one I'd be kind of interested in if he did run. I thought he put up a huge race, uh, a run a run over at, at uh, Aintree. He he missed the last there, or missed the third last, and a little mistake at the last. Could have got up on another day and beat John Bon on what was only a second run over hurdles. I thought that was a huge effort. He could be uh, right too. I think uh, he, he's going to want to see about him this week, whether he can run, but he doesn't have many miles on the clock. Uh, so he'd be interesting as well. Uh, just hard to know who's going to run, Mike, but El Fabiolo would be the interesting one for me if he did show up. Well, it is a case of musical mullins, isn't it? When the music stops, what's he going to have in what race? Um, Barry, I presume you, you sing from the same hymn sheet. It's, if only we knew exactly what he was going to run. I think he'll split them again. I, I think um, Dysart Dynamo, there's no way you're stepping up him up in trip. I think two miles in a fence is the only thing that might slow him down a little bit as a fence. Uh, maybe he'll respect fences more. I, I, I think uh, with a view to this race, I think he probably goes here. Um, he won't have a John Bond pestering him, surely. Um, in the early stages here, I think John Bond drove him mad in, in, in the Supreme. Um, really lit him up. Um, took him on for the lead early. Was always on his quarters, uh, Dysart Dynamo. And, um, I'm, I'm not sure if he's going to have that sort of dispute for the lead in here. I say Sir Gerhard probably goes sticks to the two and a half, even though he's, he's favoured here in the betting. That'd just be my view on it. El Fabiolo for me, um, I would see him as potentially not running here. I think he'd a hard race at entry. He was very impressive on, as Ronan said, what was just a second start. Um, he's another horse that I think going chasing next season, you're going to see an even better horse. Um, State man, wouldn't be surprised the fact that the Donnelly says two in here. I think bring on the night is interesting and a bigger sort of a price here. I think he's he's come for a bit of early support, 14s into 10s. Um, ran ran a solid enough race in in, in the Supreme um, for, for a long time. You know, finished fourth. Uh, it was as only as his, his second, I suppose, start in, I suppose, since he joined Willie Mullins. He was very, very green at uh, Nace. Um, coming to the last, he was hanging and everything. He, he really impressed me the way he won at Nace um, on, on debut. And it was obviously a, sh- a quick turnaround as well between that and the Supreme Novices hurdle. He'd be one that I'd be interested in the bigger price. Mighty Potter for me, he really disappointed me in the Supreme. Uh, as he's come for support here, he's one entry across the week. I thought it was maybe the perfect opportunity maybe to step him up in trip. Um, it looks like, you know, Gordon is going to go here with him. Um, and you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to desert him here. Uh, for me, he was just completely outpaced in the Supreme. Dysart Dynamo, I think he'll go here. I think he'll take the world to beating. And I cannot wait to see him going over a fence next year. Uh, so that'd be, look, it, it, it might sound boring, but Dysart Dynamo, um, over course and distance here back in January, was 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 very, very, was very, very good. He's won at the festival, the Punchstown Festival at the past, the bumper. And I don't think the ground will be an issue. He goes here, and for me, he'll take a lot of beating. Well, we're going to try and get a lot in in a fairly short space of time. So if I can ask you guys to be reasonably brief on this, and I'm sure you will. All you've got to do is wave the scarf, Barry, and then that deals with you, um, the champion chase. Just wave that scarf, go on. E-I-E-I-E-I-O, up the racing, Lee Svigo. <laughs> and urge me, yeah, move on, Mike. He wins. Yeah, uh, Barry, uh, you go there, no surprise. Roland, is he right? Uh, I'm not sure he is. Um, oh, I'm not sure he is. I'm not sure he is, Basil. Uh, to be honest, like Barry was too busy, you know, w- waving that, that Brighton and Hove Albion scarf around uh, Cheltenham and <laughs> kissing the feet of Tony Bloom in the parade ring there to realise that that champion chase fell apart. It was a glorified grade three by the time they were finished. It, it was Shishkin fell, or Shishkin pulled up, Shakan fell, Funambul de Savola was, was second and then got, you know, pulled up at Aintree. It was it was a it was a terrible tournament chase. Uh, Shaq, or Ernest Ernest Mean did it well. He did it nicely. He had his ground. Everything it was everything fell into place from uh, on the day. Um, I think yeah, back at Punchestown, and I've been against Shaq Allen before, but all the time I've been against him has been at Cheltenham. Back in Ireland, you know his record is electric. He's 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 uh, obviously two of his best performances have come in Punchestown. He's only been beaten once in Ireland, remember, by one absolute tired. Uh, on a seasonal debut one year in the uh, the the, uh, the Paddy Parrott uh, sponsored Grade Two there at uh, Leopardstown over Christmas, so we had a reasonable excuse that day. Uh, 
and his two runs, two of his best performances, as I said, are coming punches town. The year he was in, obviously beat uh, Jeffy DeSoil, came from nowhere then that season and one was electric. And last season he beat Alaho. How good is that form? Absolutely brilliant form. Uh, Alaho, who just literally um, smashed up everything at Cheltenham, uh, was a 175 chaser there and, and Shaq and Persois had him strung out by the end of the race. I think there's a good chance he can do the same to Nerge. I mean, here on quick ground, I think that could be key to Shakan as well. Quick ground, quick jumping. He does a lot of the winning Leopardstown as well. I think he's uh, he's a he's a live player here, obviously in the match, and I think it'll have him a bit closer. I think you can get him at six to four still. I think this could be really, really close, really tight, and I'd be on the side of Shakan. All right, quick straight on then to the other uh, novice grade one on day one. And this is the Dooley Insurance. This is the three miler and fascinating Bob Ollinger. Um, is the jury still out on his jumping, Roland? Um, or even Ronan? Yeah, no, uh, may, maybe, Mike. Yeah, he, he doesn't jump as well as you'd like him to, but he, he might get away with that more now over three miles. It's interesting, isn't it? I, like, I was tend to think at Cheltenham that he was just outclassed by better horse in the day and, and you, you were listening to a few excuses coming in and sometimes you hear those excuses and it, it's kind of people want excuses when when there really isn't one there but subsequently i've heard that he had a bit of a, a hamstring issue um uh, since henry reported that so that's interesting he reports him on track for this and it's, it is fascinating to see him up on trip obviously capadano is in there as well his uh he kind of rose to prominence at this meeting last year he won a handicap hurdle of three miles there he dotted up a little bit disappointed at Cheltenham. So I think this is wide open. And the the British horse is interesting. That Alex Hales declared him today. Miller's Bank. He won going away. Uh, you know, a week enough novice chase there at Aintree. So, but he's definitely a runner, which is interesting. I believe Fury Road is is on target for this, even though he ran only you know two weeks ago at Aintree as well. Uh, and he he's definitely a player as well. Um, with his form this season, if he shows up, look. I think it's too hard to call now, Mike. It's obviously a fascinating race. They all show up, but it's it's not, you know, it's hard to make a case for anything strongly now. Beacon Edge, another one that I, I like, and he, I'd be interested in if he showed up, but I'm not going to nail my colours to the mask at the moment. Barry? Jeez, I'd be absolutely mad, mad to take on Bob Ollinger here. He absolutely walked over the line. Ronan's given excuses for the horse. Fair enough. Jumping this season has been um, poor. To say the to say the least, he's he's a six to four chance in here. I mean, what the hell? How could you back Bob Ollinger up in trip for the first time? The way he holds yeah. his head and everything. Holds That's his an anti-post price, though. I'd say Barry. I'd say they've just been a bit <clears throat> there with the. No, I, I I I get I get what you're saying, but it's it's you know I suppose lining up if he, he's he's going to be short, I'd be I'd be taking him on. Um, I'd be definitely taking him on. Um, Miller's Bank. Um, I was waiting to see Woody go here Ronan so I didn't actually see that before before recording uh, Miller's Bank I, I thought he was very very impressive um, at, at entry it, it, by the time this race is ran it'll be it'll be almost three weeks um, so it'll be 19 days um, and look I think stepping up in trip this horse seems to do his best work at the finish um, you know th this horse is I think he's, he's very very interesting Capadano is a horse that I think stepping up in trip you were always going to see a better Capadano, but he jumped poorly at Cheltenham. Um, he disappointed me. If the real Capadano turns up in here, um, I think he'd be he'll be he'll be a tough one to beat over three miles. <clears throat> Festival winner, of course, last year in the in the handicap uh, over three miles will stay. Um, if he jumps a bit better, if the real Capadano turns up, will be hard to beat. But at the prices at the moment, seven to one Miller's Bank. Anyone wants a bet? Um, at, at those sort of prices, I, I, I wouldn't put them off whatsoever. Um, at the prices currently right now, I'll go Miller's Bank. Um, I think he's he's on an upward curve and uh, like his profile. So to Wednesday and the staying novice hurdle, the 520, the Irish Daily Mirror race, the first to look at. Uh, the one they named after Ronan, the nice guy, is uh, unbeaten and probably favourite. And we've got the commentator's nightmare of Minella Kakuna and Minella Kruna. Whatever you are doing, watch your bets. What wins, Barry? Well, just just interesting. Uh, the nice guy <clears throat> just off an interview with Patrick Mullins, which we're going to hear. 
Uh, but one takeaway for me, one, one BFO or learning from the interview was he was quite uh, sweet on Manila Cocooner's chances maybe of reversing the form at Punchestown, uh, going right-handed. Uh, I suppose just the track he felt, you know, may play to the strengths more of Manila Cocooner. Um, just a nugget as well, because you, you never even gave me a chance to speak about an urge, I mean. Uh, Shaq and Pursois, Patrick did comment he wasn't giving him a wonderful feel when he came down in the champion chase. So just interesting. Um, and, and on that, just to go back to that, an urge, I mean, just wins. So uh, plain sailing. Well, that's uh, why just I had, didn't just had to say didn't that. To ask you. <laughs> Coming on here, the nice You're guy. Muddy water around without uh, how can a 10 year old revert? Yeah, well, look, look. Anyway, this race here, I think the nice guy, what he done. Um, on just a second start over hurdles. The two of these are very, very good. Can't see anything else getting involved here. I think the two of these are very, very good horses. Uh, the heart says, the heart says the nice guy, Manella Cocoon, or a lot went wrong for him in the Albert Bartlett. He raced wide, he raced keen. Uh, it's going to be fascinating. I wouldn't be strong on either or. I think the two of them are very, very good horses. Manella Cocoon or over a fence back and trip next year would be interesting. I think the nice guy, um, for something like an RSA, Boko chasing two very, very good horses in my view. At the prices, if you, look, I'll stick, I'll stick loyal, I'll stay loyal. The nice guy for me, uh, but it wouldn't be uh, an overly confident selection, Mike. Yeah, well, we're hearing from Patrick Mullin shortly, as uh, as Barry said, I don't know about you, Ronan. I don't know what, what they're going to do with this journey with me. I wouldn't have won it, Chad, but we're still running a great race. Um, is this going to be his target? But what about the one at the bottom, Mr. The, the nice guy? I like the nice guy. I have to say, um, I thought uh, for a horse like him to do that on his on what was just a second start over hurdles um, at Cheltenham was a huge performance. And uh, people look at the Albert Bartlett, and it used to be people you, you think of the Albert Bartlett, and you need about ten runs, you need to do loads of experience. But recently, horses that have been, yeah, the lightly raced horses that have won it have turned out to be really good. Uh, like the Manila Indo won there, I think, on just his third start. So I think this, the nice guy uh, could be very good as well. Um, I, 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 going forward, definitely. Um, here, this is not a good race. Like Manila Kakuna doesn't have that much, doesn't have a huge amount of fine with him. You, you have to take into account that you made a, a significant error as well late on. Uh, and and in, the mo in the main, he jumps very well, Manila Kakuna. He jumped on the sleeper from the front there at, uh, at Leopardstown. Uh, I was at a preview night last night with uh, Davy Russell was on the panel and the whole Manila crooner thing was that, you know, that Leopardstown race was a bit falsely run and, and Danny Mullins got the run of it from the front. And he said himself and Gordon had a right row on the way in. Um, you know, Gordon seemed to think, what were you doing? You should have attacked early or, or got up to Manila crooner quicker. And, and Davey didn't seem to think that was the case, uh, which is interesting. You know, maybe uh, maybe we're underrating this Manila cocooner. He, he showed a child that he is he's a very good horse in his own right. Uh, and and that leopard ten performance should be respected more. Uh, quicker than journey with me. Look, I think just three miles will suit him better. Hard race at Cheltenham, a tired fall at the end, but he proved that he's up to that sort of standard with the type of run he did there, trying to put it up to Sir Gerhard. He, he would have been third, I think, uh, the way Three Stripe Life finished off. But the Ballymore form has already worked out well with Three Stripe Life winning at Aintree, so that's respected. If they all show up here, this would be a great ro great race. But I like the nice guy, Mike. Okay, let's look at the gold cup then, shall we? Um, Willie Mullins with umpteen here. So if you've got a rider's license, Ronan, Ronan, if you have, I should be on the phone to the Sutton immediately. <laughs> £275,000 Ladbrokes Punchestown Gold Cup, in which we have, of course, Manila Indo, and we also have Album Photo, past winners of the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Uh, we also have past winners of this race. And Paul Nichols, I was talking to him earlier today, confirming that Clan Des Orbo is on course for the race. And then we have Galvin, I'm still not sure about after the Gold Cup. Um, again, what will Willie Valdez run here? It's not the first time I've asked this question tonight. Won't be the last either. And Ronan, you can have another try answering it. <laughs> I think there's a reasonable chance he runs Alaho here. He's already they've already the Mullins camp have already come out and um and said they want to go up to three miles and I think he could be yeah, I think he could be one of the best of the week here. I think he's he's the best chaser around. Um and I include absolute tart in that conversation as well. Um look, everyone's gonna talk about the three mile thing. It's not like he 
you know, it's not like he's uh, he's a desperate non-trier. He's, he's he's been third in a, in a Brown advisory, and he was second in a three mile grade one to Manella in the over hurdles here a couple of years ago as well. I think he's a much better horse now. That's the difference here now, uh, and he settles much better. And I think the way this race might set up, like if you take Idaho in the Ryanair two years ago, going off in front, helter skelter, that's obviously not sustainable over three miles. But you take this year's Idaho, set lovely in front, always traveling well, jumping well, and then just kicked away from them. I think he could do this here. I think it's going to be a small field. Uh, Willie is going to have most of the runners. He can control the race. Paul Townend's going to ride him. And he can control the race from the front. There's nothing really going to go up and hassle him, I don't think. And uh, I just think he's one of the best of the week, I have to say. In a 4-5 or five runner field, I think he's going to be short in 7-4 on the day. And that's including, you know, taking in the fact that Manila Endo's probably going to run here, Galvin and Clande's Obo. Um, I like Alho a lot. And uh, I think I think he might be underrated because people think he mightn't stay. But I think this, this race works out nicely for him. And of course, uh, there isn't a hill at the end of Punchistan. Like there is at Cheltenham. Um, Barry, what's uh, just, your thoughts on this? This lad will stay all day. He'll stay all day. And and uh, <laughs> what, did, what would I say? He's some bus, isn't he? He's a bus. They're describing him as a bus, Alaho. This this thing man, must be some spin. Um, and I think the older he's getting as well, I mean, you know, I'd say if Willie had the time back, he, he'd only be probably be going three miles with him now. Um, at this stage in his career because you know the way he in his early stages chasing you know he was attacking his fences jumping he seems to be settling an awful lot better just I think the first time I saw him he really dropped his head at Clamel this year and um, the older he's getting um I I'd love to see him go to Gold Cup route next year. I think he wins this. I think he Ronan's absolutely right. I think he's one of the bets of the week. I mean there's still Still odds against here, Alaho, and you probably will get odds, even money odds against on the day, seven to four. Best price two to one at the moment. Jeez, take all you want of it. Paddy has confirmed he's you know he is gonna run in it, and uh I don't see anything getting past him. Um stamina isn't going to be an issue here whatsoever. Okay, well, before we hear from Paddy Mullins, let's uh, talk about a race that Paddy will hope to win because it is Facil Vega versus American Mike. Round two in the race and stay at Punchestown, uh, National Hunt flat race. This is the champion bumper. Um, can you see anything else getting involved if they both turn up, um, uh, Ronan? Uh, hard to hard to see, Mike. Um, wouldn't have a huge opinion on the race. I think they're both two really nice horses going forward. American Mike, definitely more offensive. I'll pass this one over to Basil. He, he'd be more of a a bumper connoisseur to me. Like know, your, n- know your audience, Mike Vince. Know your audience. Do yeah, well, also, I mean, I mean there's no, there'll be nothing faulty in his answers either. Um, and the one I would love to see run a big race is, uh, is Sandor Clagone because Paul Nolan's not had much luck. But um, Barry, seriously, uh, Fasil Vega versus American Mike and the rest for third place. I don't know. This, this bumper has a habit of throwing up strange winners, isn't he? Big, big price winners. Um, do horses hold their form? Vassal Vega has had, um, you know, was absolutely bottomless at Cheltenham as well um, on the day the bumper was ran. So, look, obviously on form, the one to beat looks an absolute airplane. Uh, but I'm absolutely fascinated in, and I'm not saying he's going go, going to go and beat him, but if he runs at this sort of price, I'll probably back him each way, um, is Impulsive Dancer. Uh, Richard O'Brien's horse that thought was going to be a flat horse um put him away said he was showing absolutely nothing at home and ended up um working pretty well i think before winning at nace on bumper since been bought by uh, the, the maneers and sent to, to willie mullins bet uh, mercury uh, the well-touted mercury at limerick and done it very nicely good ground won't be an issue i think he could be improving uh patrick described him as a pony at home he's not very big uh, but I think this horse could have a big, big engine, impulsive dancer. And he's one I'm very, very interested. He's one entry in bumpers this week. He's a four-year-old. He's getting a bit of weight off, obviously, off his elders in here. Um, and at 10 to 1, I think he's very, very interested. I'm willing to take on Fasal Vega at odds on, considering, I suppose, champion bumpers, rec- winners, records going on to follow up at Punchestown. And given, I suppose, the season that he's had. So, look, Facile Vega could be an absolute airplane. Can't see how American Mike reverses the form, but uh, impulsive dancer each way, 10 to 1. 
so there you have the thoughts on the first two days and the grade one races. There's plenty more to come. We haven't even mentioned the word honeysuckle yet due to run on Friday, of course. But let's hear from a man who has got a boot full of winners around Punchestown, had some of his finest hours. Remember that incredible uh, grade one winning Friday that he had. We had two grade one winners back to back. Wickler Brave was one of them. And uh, it looks as though he might incredibly steal the jockey's title, the amateur jockey's title, the one he didn't win it from uh, Jamie Codd. Then there was Uncle Junior. And so he's had some great days around Punchestown. And he is, of course, also assistant to his father. Here's Paddy Mullins with Barry. Uh, I suppose starting on Tuesday, uh, Paddy, Dysart Dynamo. Um, he made a massive impression, didn't he, at Punchestown back in January. Um, how's he been since his fall at Cheltenham? negative effects on him um, so hopefully he'll have learned from that um, yeah look sure who knows how he would have gone to it's, it's hard to think he'd have beaten Constitution Hill but perhaps he would have been a second um, and I think probably I think Punchdown will play to his strength obviously he won Novice Hurdle there and I won a bump on him there at the festival last year when he was tried dropping him in it was, it was like wrestling a bear around he was very keen but he still managed to win so um, I, I think Punchdown and Good Brown will really play to his strength He looks uh, quite a physically imposing horse Paddy and likely racing off of a hurdles is he I suppose w would he have a future over fences is that the, the long term plan? Yeah he definitely has the speed for it um, you know he's a big strong horse um, so uh, you know we're See then when we start schooling him next autumn whether he has the uh, the brain for it as such. But um, on his physique, you would look at him and think he should be a fantastic chaser. Yeah. Mm, and Willie, of course, w well represented in this uh, entries was El Fabiolo. Uh, ran a big race, of course, at uh, at entry of Bring On the Night. Lots of unexposed types in here, Paddy. Is there? I suppose are are they, are they all likely to run or? What's the thoughts on, on, on day one? Well, he's going to have to have two of the big guns here. Um, you know, El Fabiolo got a hard race in um, in Aintree. He was probably unlucky not to beat John Bond. He got badly hampered at the third last and then missed the last. Um, but perhaps John Bond might be a bit flat from chasing Constitution Hill and Chatham. So he's obviously got lots of untapped potential. Um, Sir Gerhard got beaten here last year. Um, but I think he just might have been feeling the effects of uh, changing yards. You know, he probably got away with it in Cheltenham because it was quite a short turnaround. But it's not an easy thing to do to change yards um, mid-season, and that might have just have caught him out. So, um, but the one I would say to keep an eye on is bring on the night. I think his run in Cheltenham was probably uh, underrated. You know, for a horse with not a lot of experience, um, he was right on the tails of Kill Crush and John Bond. Um, but he's one that just could be uh, overpriced, perhaps. Brilliant. Um, the champion chaser, an Urgemain. How is he? Yeah, came out of Cheltenham fabulous. Um, Imran Adir, who rides out of the is really, really happy with him. Um, look, the race in Cheltenham obviously fell apart. It, it probably ended up being a great duel in reality. Um, but, you know, the way he travelled through it, uh, he travelled and jumped and, and quickened like a champion chaser. So, obviously, this would be very different ground, but he won here in Punchdown last year, so I don't think that'll be any... Uh, I don't think that'll be any um, uh, negative for him. And perhaps even he does seem to adjust a little bit to his right, so going right-handed probably suits him well. Yeah, you mentioned, actually, just, I suppose, that there was a change of tactics, uh, Paddy. You seem to, you seem to take to that quite well. Ergamine has probably made the running because it suited him. He has a strong cruising speed. He jumps very well, but he doesn't need to make the running. He's not like on the show in that he's a key horse. You know, you can set him in behind, no problem. Um, so <clears throat> it depends on what the race is. If if if, if Willie wants if Willie or Paul wanted to make the running, he can. But if he can be dropped in, um, the tactics, the change tactics in he exaggerated change tactics in Cheltenham, but more so that we didn't want to give it the lead. Yeah, and of course we must not forget Shaq and Persuas. Uh Patrick, disappointed, obviously he came down, you were on board. 
Um, on on the day, I suppose, is, is realistically, do you think, you know, he can really put it up to energy being here? Walking to the third fence in the Tampa Chase and, and then obviously put down a defence rig over me, which is not like him. Um, and, you know, to be honest, I, I wasn't hugely surprised that he did what he did. Um, wasn't giving me a fantastic feel, the feel I thought he would in Chetlam. Um Look, around Punchdown, he seems to be very happy. Um, but he is 10, Energamine is 8, Energamine is in his prime, so it's, it's going to be very difficult to beat uh, Energamine. But, you know, we think the world is shocking, so if any horse can pull it out of the hat, he can. At Badano, now this, of course, on, on, on the Tuesday, the Three Mile Novice, um, it looks like Bob Ollinger and himself uh, both entered in here, obviously. He was four lengths second at Capadano to Bob Ollinger over a shorter trip back in January. Do you think he can turn that around here? Way below par in Cheltenham, so he had to come back from that. Um, you know, to me, Bob Ollinger is a better horse, but he had to come back from a, a below par run. And you know, Henley's just starting firing like they can, um, so that has to give Capadano a chance. So I wouldn't say it's a lost cause. He looks a, a gorgeous specimen, anyway. Capadano, of course, a Punchestown Festival winner. He is. He's, um, he's quite light frame, but he's tall, typical French horse. Um, and obviously, as you say, won there a handicap there last year. Um, but he seems to be a much more, a much better chaser. Yeah, the Irish Daily Mayor Navas on the Wednesday, uh, the three mile, of course, uh, the nice guy. Uh, lacked experience coming into Cheltenham, uh, Paddy, but he certainly met up for it with his engine. Yes, uh, horse, he had his injury problems. You know, he started with the and um, he's um, yeah, he doesn't show much at home. He, he wouldn't blow you away at home, you know. We we got a thought it was great to get him in two bumper for them, and I say a lot of trainers wouldn't even have bothered sending him to Cheltenham. Um, but you know, Willie's approach is if you're not in, you can't win, and every year we'll get a winner who's 16, 20 to 1. Um, you know, a lot of people don't bring the horse to Cheltenham, but if you're not there, you can't win, and uh, he was an example of that. So um, but I think, you know, I think he's got a lovely ride in the day, Sean O'Keefe, um, and perhaps Manella Cocooner might be better in Punchdown. I think, um, you know, it'll probably be a smaller field, there'll probably be uh, less competition for the, for the, for the lead, and Punchdown is far more, a far more front-running track than the new course in Cheltenham. so... It's been interesting to see can he confirm pace from Malika Cooner. I wouldn't be certain he will. Yeah, we must mention Alaho. Of course, twice Ryanair winner uh, entered, of course, in the Punchestown Gold Cup. Steps up in trip here. Uh, how is he? Yeah, he's in great form. You know, we didn't go to entry. Um, you know, it, well, it, the way he races, it, it takes a lot out of him. Um, so we wanted to give him time to recover. Um, look, he's He's near on beat by the two and a half miles, but he's still a very, very good horse over two miles and three miles. Um, you know, he was second, obviously, to Shack in last year's you know, champion chase. Um, but he ran, you know, he was only just beat, I think, by Manila Indo over three miles in a novice hurdle uh, once on a few years ago, and then was third in the RSA. So it's not that he doesn't stay, but he probably just isn't as effective over three miles. Um, he, again, is probably one that is better going left handed just trips left. Um, you know, with one in the John Durkin, um, now that was his first time to win the first time out, but it's uh, he, he, I don't think he'd be able to put in a performance like he does at Chetham in the Ryanair, but he might still be able to win the race. He might just have the raw ability to do it over three miles on nice ground. Um, you know, if you stop the RSA at three miles, he probably had the race won. So um yeah, it'll be fascinating to see now. Yeah, and of course, Facile Vega, Paddy, he was absolutely teaming down in Cheltenham for the champion bumper, and Leperstown, he did what he did, but he must have given you some feel at Cheltenham also. Yeah, look, he's, 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 he's,
he's a he's a monster of a horse. Um, you know, to be keeping his son makes him incredibly special. Um, although you would think he's adopted, he's about four times the size she was, but um, he must get that from his daddy's side. Uh, but yeah, look, he's always been catching the eye at home. Uh, Willie always does a little less, but I mean, just trying to keep the lid on him, keep him, keep him in one piece, keep him sound. Uh, he doesn't need a lot of hard work. Uh, he seems to come out of Cheltenham very well. Um, and you'd like to think he can confirm the place that American Mike. Um, you know, I, I don't, I think nice ground should help our fella. He's a good mover. He's won a left sound. Um, American Mike looks maybe more stamina orientated and hopefully Punchdown can play to our strengths more. A lively bunch of owners by the looks of it. They are. The Hammer and Trowel, they know how to celebrate it. One, one I did want to actually just mention, Paddy, um, just that who is entered in the, in the bumper, um, made the switch from Richard O'Brien's uh, impulsive dancer. He seemed to, he he done a lovely, actually, Limerick, didn't he? He did. Um, yeah, he, he, he looks like a fat little pony. Uh, he wouldn't take your eye at all, and even when he's only cantering, he's very lazy and laid back, but uh, his fast work is very good, and it was no surprise what he did in Limerick. Um, his work would suggest that's what he, he was going for love, and that's what he did. Classical dream. He didn't come off the bridle in the Champion Stairs last year. Same again this time? Yeah, I, I wrote him work this morning. Uh, I think he's in fantastic form. Um, I think the spring, he likes the springtime. Uh, look, in Sheldon, he started backing away at the start and we ended up jumping off last. You know, so instead of maybe in Leopardstown, we got the flyer of stars and punched in Sheldon, we had to um, we had to give the head start. So I think he'd be fine in Punchdown and um, I, I expect him to sub it up. You must mention Boban. He was, he looked pretty slick in the, in the triumph, Paddy. How's he been? Yeah, look, he's a horse with a lot of class, a lot of speed. Um, you know, high class, flat horse. And it's hard to get your hands on them nowadays. Um, he, uh, you know, I think Cheltenham really suited him. They went quite slow. It, it played into his hands. He's got a lot of speed. He missed the last and was still able to quicken up and go away from them, which was, was very impressive. Um, I think he's above average for a Triumph Hurdle winner. Um, and I'd expect him to confirm the placings in Punchstone all being well. And Ilete Tom, he seems to do a lot of his best work at the end, Paddy. Is, is, uh, is, is it likely he'll uh, take his chance also? I imagine he will. Um, he does his worst work in the first mile. He's so keen. Um, he's far too keen for his own good. Um, you know, it was, it was just he gave Danny a horrible time in the first mile in the Triumph Hurdle. So, but again, they went quite slow that day. Um, he'll need to learn to settle and probably when he gets a fast pace, you'll see him at his best. I think he's won 22 grade ones in his career, Patrick. Punches Town has been good to him, but he's lit the place up many times. And let's hope he has a good week. So we move on then, away from the first two days. This is where it gets a bit more difficult, simply because, quite clearly, trying to think exactly what he's going to run and where it's going to run is not easy. Uh, we have the Champions Stairs hurdle uh, on Thursday. And Patrick mentioning, of course, uh, that name. We think that's a classical dream and that extraordinary exhibition of jumping a year ago. I still can't believe what I was watching that day, Ronan. Can you? Yeah, yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, he absolutely hacked up. I believe I believe the whole gamble was formulated through uh, him doing a piece of work with an urgermine. And um, that, that looked very, very, very good. And that's why the, the, the odds tumbled on the day and he absolutely hacked up. Totally different preparation this time around, Mike. Um, you know, he got beaten, well beaten at Goran and he was disappointing a bit at Chesham. I take... I take them, uh, Patrick's kind of excuse from that day. He got, got a bit of left at the start, completely different to Leopardstown, where he, he, he got a flyer, obviously, on floor and poor, and the two of them went off clear. Um, so 
Look, back at Punchestown, he is interesting. Uh, I was on that same panel that I was on last night for the Punchestown preview. Gavin Cromwell was there, and he Gavin wouldn't say a huge amount of these. He doesn't give them a lot away, uh, Mr. Cromwell, but he said he was asked for his lay of the week, and he said it was classical dream. And obviously, he'd have quite a good read on the three-mile hurdle division. Um, so he's keen to take him on. I don't know, Mike, have you got your crystal ball out there? Or maybe you've heard it on the grapevine. But is uh, Emma Lavelle likely to bring Paisley Park over? Have you heard yet? Or is that she is last time any, anything was said it was yes, because um, she believes that the, the, the track will suit. Um, and, of course, they didn't go to Liverpool because the track doesn't suit. Um, yeah. But Mr McManus might have a strong hand here, might he not, with... Uh, Possibly side to play, but I'm fascinated by the Devils coachman because I'm convinced there's a big race in him. Yeah, I, I think the ground is is possibly the issue for him. Uh, might might need it a bit softer. Um, he didn't run at the weekend. He is. I do do like him as well, Mike. I think he's uh, the up and comer here. Just a word for Paisley Park, though. This is a race that you know the old boys can come back and win this race. Think about you know what I mean, Harry. Think about Fahim. Uh, look, Paisley Park is ten. Uh, but he's run pretty consistent this season. Another big run. He was third, you know, right up to standard in this Sayers hurdle, only beating two just under three lengths from Soren Porter there, and obviously beat Champ the last day. So, look, a replication of that sort of effort sees him go close enough in a muddling kind of race, I think. So, uh, that would be kind of be the way I'd be leaning at this early stage if he does run. Uh, Barry, I mean, to me, the staying hurdle division, apart from Flooring Porter, of course, we got two terrific front running rides from Danny Mullins. It needs something to emerge and I can't see where it's going to emerge from when you've got an eight year old classical dreamers favorite and the two second favorites are 10 and 10. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'd be taking a flyer on something maybe with some potential upside <laughs> left um, has a lot to find on ratings, but I mentioned I'm going into to entry um, and I'm fascinated that he steps up and trip again here. That's Ashdale Bob uh, for Jesse. 10 to 1 chance. He's one entry this week. I thought he ran a very, very big race in the Coral Cup on soft ground. Uh, bottomless ground as it was. And, you know, he, he led that day. And most of the horses finishing that day came from off the pace. He was, you know, he was up there. He was quite free, I thought, early. And a step up and trip. Um here, I think, is going to suit him. He's won on yielding ground in the past. Uh, Fairy House, you know, he, he won at the, the Fairy House Festival last Easter. Um, so, you know, she can get him ready. Um, on, on ratings, he's he's a bit to find. I know Ronan has always liked the horse, uh, but I thought 10 to 1 was, was was reasonable in a race that I'm absolutely against those at the top of the, at top of the market. I've, I've never been a, a classical dream fan. It takes about 10 people to cart him around inside in the in the parade ring, he's always on his toes early. What classical dream will show up? Sir de Burley flashing the pan. I thought at entry, Paisley Park. Um, look, he's he can't have much winning left. You'd have to think with Emma Lavelle. I think he does go here. She, she mentioned that was the plan. Devil's coachman, agree with Ron on ground and Ashdale Bob 10 to 1. Gentle's man's game as well is interesting if he goes, but uh, selection Ashdale Bob uh, 10 to 1 each way, good each way price, I think. Okay, so as we move on then to the other Thursday grade one, which is the uh, Barberstown Castle novice, this is the two mile novice. Um, let me pick up what Ronan was saying earlier. He was on a panel with Gavin Cromwell. Uh, was he any more forthcoming about Gabby Nacco, who, uh, according to a set of odds I've got in front of me here, is the second favourite for this? Yeah, he's going to run here. Um... Gavin said, um, and was quite positive about him, naturally. Obviously, it's a big call to run him at Cheltenham. Uh, £8,000 the cost to supplement him for the Arsenal, and that kind of paid off because he ran nicely. He was given a canny ride there by Keith Donahue and, and finished second to Edward Stone. I think he's a horse that will enjoy the better ground. I think he can get jumping better out of the better ground. But I guess... Um, with with gentlemen to me in here and there's been a bit of money for him today uh sees into at two to one now he's usurped gabby Nacco in favoritism um i think he would take all the beating mike to be honest i thought he was electric at eight three maybe you could make a case that edward stone was is you know had a long season and, and, and maybe just 
was running out of petrol then by the time Aintree came along, but I thought Gentleman and D me jumped really well in front. There's no real reason to suspect that Edwards don't underperform. So in that case you're nearly you know, you can nearly make a case for Gentleman to me being the best novice two mile novice around, seeing as he's take taken the King's crown from Cheltenham as such. So um he's likely rough race as well, Gentleman D and kind of just progressing nicely. Um I think he'll take all the beating here. I know he's the favourite, but um yeah, and it's a bit boring, but I think yeah, I think he, this could be a really good two mile novice novice for next year, or for two mile horse for next year as well. Barry, um, I thought gentleman to me was nice at entry, nineteen day turnaround. I'd say he's a lot harder on himself the way he races than maybe the way the way maybe it looked at the finish, and just the way he you know his style of racing for me nineteen days. Gabby Nacko, I'm more interested in what to do with this horse next year, uh, Ronan. I don't know that he mentioned plans for, for beyond this year, but I thought this horse, two miles is plenty short for him. I'd be looking for an extended three mile with Gabby Nacko. Uh, the way he's finished off his, 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 his race in the Arkell, uh, he's not even priced up in the Gold Cup market, but I was scouring the, the markets after Cheltenham to see maybe staying trips for this horse next year would be just interesting, I felt, uh, you know what, I'm not going to give up on Blue Lord. I felt going into the Arkell, he was the best of willies. Um, I think he is clear of of, of St. Sam and Hot and Colors. Uh, he has, I suppose, th the most experience of willies heading in here in terms of his, 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 his starts over fences. And you know what, 11 to 4, 3 to 1. Um, I don't think I'm not entirely sure he he, he ran his best race in the Arkell itself. So um, I'd be I'd be thinking that that's a that's a fair price, uh, eleven to four, three to one, on 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 Willie Mullins's uh, Blue Lord. So that'd be my selection in here, Mike. Well, let me stay with you because let's go to Friday. All eyes, of course, will be on Honeysuckle, but with no Constitution Hill, um, and we don't even know whether Epitante is going to turn up or the the JP team will concede defeat and the San Ra and possibly De Rosso might uh, represent them. So my question to the pair of you is very simple. Assuming Honeysuckle is the day's good thing and the week's good thing, uh, what would you have chasing her home? Uh, the discussion that we might have quickly here is how disappointing it is that Constitution Hill doesn't come over. Ah, feck know. off, Roland, please. Come on. What? You you don't... You, you, you support no. the decision? No, I do, yeah, 100%. You're like... Jesus, like, it, do you think Willie Mullins would do that? Going the opposite direction, not a not a hope in hell, not a hope in hell. And it's I, you know it's I, a, it's 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 your it's your Nicky Henderson, uh, it's your Nicky Henderson uh, agenda again. I think here, Nicky Henderson was never going to run him, and, it, and I, I will be I will mitigate it down that um, it, the, the the only reason there's a discussion about this is because Michael Buckley said it before telling them, and he got everyone's hopes up, and everyone got a bit jiggy for it, and then the they, next thing it's not happening. But it is a larger. There's a larger issue here with the, the you know the spacing out of horses and, and the five day festival, and it's all the one thing. And we need to have these clashes. And you know novices running against senior horses. It isn't. It's not a. It's not. It used to be quite a normal thing to do. Not anymore, and uh, I just think it was disappointing. The owner clearly wants to run, and, and Nicky didn't, and not for the first time this season. He's shirked a, a battle. We gave him a lot of praise, obviously, when uh, when when it ran Shishkin in uh, against the Nurjamin, and we had a great race. Look what happened there. Look how good that was for racing. I think it's disappointing that Constitution Hill didn't didn't show up a bunch of town, or isn't going to show up a bunch of town. Might never get the chance to run against Honey Suckle again, and that's. That's what we're dealing with. So yeah, Honeysuckle will win, Mike, I think. But uh, yeah, the race is is void of, of any real intrigue through competition. Um, I, I, think I, well, can, I mean, I think Henderson might still, I mean, if he talks to him even now, it still bugs him. Um, and I think it's to do with the the mistake over running Altior against um, Surname. Yeah, no, but that well, was but the that's great, a one that horse. was a great hype match, and it went horribly wrong, and, and effectively did for Altio, and I think, but that still sort of wraps him. But the thing about it is, why should it be? A, a, I think the concern is why should it be a Punchestown? Uh, only where in, in any event, you know, he's had him primed to the minute. I have he's only had two novice hurdles, 
Um, but at least he's he, they've jumped now. It'd be far more disappointing if you know it's simply we got to Sunday to uh, what next Wednesday, uh, and and it was and it was off. They've decided they're not going to go. Look, and look, Mike. And he is at the horse looks as though he's had enough. But, Somebody but, who but, actually went to the open yeah. day and saw him, and that's no. not. I'm not he's only ran three. He's only ran three times this season. But look, the bottom line is, Ronan. The, the the bottom line is, and this is the the ultimate bottom line here. There's two separate issues here. There's the you know, oh, we're considering it. We might run Michael Buckley's comments, as you said, and then there's the the the, the situation. If you look at the horse, he is a novice. How many runs has he had over hurdles? Is it three now in total? Uh, and, you, uh, and, and and we're making the argument for him to step up at Punchestown and race against Honey Suckle, who's unbeaten in a many run. You know, I, I just think. I look if he was mine, why why would you do that? Why would you step in? Like, there's a chance yeah, next year, but it's four. But it's four. But yeah, I but also think the other thing is because there is next season, why does it have to be now? Because yeah, they're I, fitting well, they're, 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 they're fitting well, and he's the best supreme not of hurdle. We probably I think he is fitting well. ever he, seen. He's, he's only around three times, Mike. Like, no, I like, think if you, as I said, I would much rather trust the opinion of somebody who was there to, who's actually seen the horse at Mickey's yard since Cheltenham. And he looks as though he needs a, you know, it took a lot, a lot out of him because he's still learning. And there's uh, but, still but time for it to happen. But, you know, we're, we're all, you know, Nicky, Nicky Henderson is very easy to throw stones at, you know, given his record of, you know, shirking the challenge. And and I get, I, I, I get that and I get the way it can kind of, but let's, let's call a spade a spade. If, the, if that was Willie, if that was Gordon. It wouldn't be and the we, same. And we'd still be saying be. the same thing. We'd still be saying uh, the same thing. I, about well, it. I guarantee it wouldn't happen the other way around. I guarantee you Willie wouldn't be sending, you know, a novice over to face uh, but, a horse. But, you know, I, the, I, thing is, the thing is, Ronnie, he wasn't even entered for the race in the first place. <laughs> and he had, and, and it, it, it would have required the horse to be supplemented. So it goes back a long time to prove their thinking, in my view. You know, I, I, I actually, on this occasion... Think that with next season in mind, it would be a marvelous final act. And if they both were, we are 12 months' time for Honeysuckle's curtain call to be against Constitution Hill. And let's see it. And I think also 5 30 or 6 o'clock on a Friday afternoon on day four, if they get a wet week, what's the ground going to be like? It's far better than they draw stumps now and, re and, and rethink it in my it's, view. It's, it, it's not going to happen, Ronan, but but genuinely, if the two of them ran up Punchestown, it's not going to happen now at this stage. Who, who, who would you, who would you, who would you, whose camp would you be in? Who, who would you fancy to win? Constitution Hill. It's been an interesting one. Me I too, actually, a, for that on that note. I think, Powell, be, I think he'd go a favour. Putting their money where their, where their mouth is as the sponsors and good luck to them. And they do, you know, they put a lot of money into racing. Oh, now, let's move on. And don't get, let's not talk, we well, mentioned the five-day festival. We're not going down that route either, by the way, boys. Not not tonight, anyway. Um, I think I've had my say, as you may have read my, my uh, column this week. I I've did, very good, very good, Mike. Very um, I'm going to go. And I, but what is your say, Mike? Just for people who haven't read it. David Pipes Adagio is going to run. It's going to be fresh and might well go well at a big price. That's all I will say. Um, there is, a, of course, racing Saturday, but it's it's really at this distance um, a speculative nonsense to try and guess what it might do. So what I'm going to do is turn to you two lads before I get your naps for Punchestown. Um, just give you freedom to mention maybe one horse or two horses that you're particularly looking forward to running at seeing run at Punchestown in, be it the Banks races, be it the uh, any of the other races, the handicaps. Ronan, got anything that's um, under the famous groom radar for the week? Uh, I got a couple of Mike. Um, uh, Del Vino uh, is a horse that might go for the two mile five furlong race. Um, you could go for the novice one or the, or, or the main one, the Guinness handicap chase. Um, he's had three runs for uh, his new trainer, uh, a guy called uh, McCrory, I think I believe, up in trained at Barma. He used to be with Dermot McLaughlin, um, but he's done quite well. This Silvino, and he beat Lifetime Ambition last time out. I think he's got. He's only had a few runs over fences. I think he's been possibly laid out for for Punches Town uh, to come here, skip the main other spring spring festivals. So look out for him. Uh, and two hurdlers in the. Uh, Sean and Bernadine will Ryan colours. Uh, an epic song. Um did it really nicely punched town on New Year's Eve. Uh he beat a horse there called Bread and Butter, who's been a kind of standing dish in the uh in 
handicap hurdles uh, this Reckon season. That's a, an outstanding dish. Well done, Ronan. <laughs> even, <laughs> even this late in a program, that didn't go over my head quite. <laughs> Uh, that that just rolled off the tongue. Um, uh, so I look out for um, uh, an epic song. Uh, I think he's he could be really talented and much better than his current mark. And and another one for um, the Mulrines is uh, fast or slow. Um, he ran second in the Louis Fitzgerald hurdle at this meeting last season. Struggled in a couple of two mile handicap hurdles uh, this season, but he ran a huge race in the Coral Cup. Just touched off there by Commander Fleet when he went back up and trip. And I think they're looking at the two and a half mile handicap hurdle for him as well. That's fast or slow. Got loads of scope to improve off the mark of 144. So they would be my three in the handicaps. Anything to mention, Barry? Uh, Ghana Patty in the two and a half mile um, handicap hurdle on Saturday. He's entered in three. I reckon he'll go on the Saturday. And he's one that's creeping down the weights. I thought he ran... A good race for a long time in the Carl Cup, race wide. Um, I'm not sure. I think on better ground, it's, it's, it's going to suit him better. Back down to, to a mark of 142. Be interesting to see who rides. There could be a couple of hands in the air for that one. Uh, Ghana Patty. Um, just to mention in the Mayor's uh, Champion Hurdle, um, very interested in Mrs. Milner. Uh, for this one, I thought she was she was probably in, in, in the mayor's hurdle at Cheltenham. She was probably most unlucky. She made an absolutely horrendous error. Um, when she was going well, she stayed on well at the finish. I'd be interested in her here now. Um, in the she's you know six to one, I thought was a very reasonable price on the Saturday. Um, and another one to mention, we've um. We've mentioned, uh, I suppose, a couple of willies already, but one in the in the in the on the Saturday in the four-year-old champion hurdle, uh, Ilet Teton, I think, is a horse. Did I say that right? Is my, is my French correct? Um, this horse is a bit of a handful early early on in his races, and he does his best work at the finish. I think he could be improving, and I'd say he could run a big race um, in there where Vauban, of course, is going to be all the rage. But Ilet Teton could. Could run big again, so that'd be my that'd be my couple, I suppose, to throw into the to the mix, Mike. There you have it. It all starts on Tuesday at three forty, and uh, finally to the two wise men. Um, naps, please, for Punches Town Week. Barry Doyle, come back to me. I'm, I'm going to cut that bit out. What does that run in? <laughs> no, no, genuinely, I'm going to cut that bit out. Just. Go to Ronan to see. Have you? I haven't even fucking picked my nap because I've been too busy interviewing people. All right. I'll, no, I'll do that. <laughs> Just do that link again then. And that finally brings me to the all important question How are we going to pay for the week, boys? Uh, naps, please. Uh, Ronan. Yeah, I'm going with Alaho in the Punchdown Gold Cup on Wednesday. I think that race will set up nicely for him. Uh, so rock solid. Barry. Nap of the week, um, Mike Vince, Miller's Bank. Very, very interesting. All against Mr. Bob Ollinger. Um, and Miller's Bank, just very interesting. Going the right way. Big price, I think, at 7-1. to one. Nap, Miller's Bank. So the headline act is Irish tipster tips British horse against Irish hot pot at Punchestown. You can't follow that. I'm not going to try and follow that. Except to say thanks to Barry and to Ronan. Please subscribe, remember. Enjoy memorable days at Punchestown. I am very cut up. I'm not going to be able to make it um, for reasons that my two colleagues know. Uh, but What's your nap, Mike? Uh, my nap is I'll go Adagio each way in the Irish champion hurdle. There you go. Oh. But what I will say is uh, that it is the most wonderful place in the world. Enjoy your trip if you are going. And remember, the bookmakers do have a separate payout queue. Uh, but we will be back. Uh, won't be with me, but I uh, hope to see in a couple of weeks. Next week, of course, we change gear dramatically with the new market guineas uh, topping the hit list. But enjoy Punchestown. And let's uh, see whether William Mullins can this year get all those trophies into the boot of his car. You've been watching the champ.ie podcast. A huge thanks to Paddy Mullins for being our special guest. He'll be on the winner's podium 
whether these two are or whether they're on the coconut shy seven days hence it is for the horses to decide bye-bye